Eddie is a 13-year-old birdie from Western Springs, Illinois. Eddie's love for birds began when he was a six-year-old taking naturalist hikes at a Waldorf school. For the past seven years, he has learned everything he can about birds. He has birded throughout the United States, traveling from one coast to the other, picking up rare birds along the way. He's a member of the Illinois Young Birders Club and has attended the biggest week in American birding for the last two years. Birds, sports, and desserts are his biggest passions. <laughs> now please welcome Eddie for his presentation title, My Experiences at the Biggest Week in American Birding. Oh, 
past. Um, I know there would be no biggest week without this list. And this is not, these are the ones I've explored a little bit, some of them I've barely heard it at, but these are just some, there's tons more that I don't know anything about. McGee Marsh Boardwalk, I'll get to in a later slide. Iowa National Wildlife Refuge is a really, really nice area to bird. I have not birded there a ton, but I've only been there once and we saw it. On an auto tour, we saw King Rail, Sora, Bald Eagles, White Rope Sandpiper, um, Black Belly Clover, and those are just a few of them. So that was, it was a really good day though. Um, Metzger Marsh is a pretty big marsh where you can see common gallinals, um, great egrets, great blue herons, bitterns, wolf species, maybe, if you're lucky. But the marsh is pretty far out. You can, there's, at the very end of the walk, of the drive, there is a area where you can see birds like, there's like a little wood lot beside this room. We saw a worm eating warbler there. Um, I think we got like 15 species of warblers in like 15 minutes, so it's like one minute. But it can be, it can be pretty cool down there. And it's right on Lake Erie, so you might be able to see like some common terns. Um, I don't know. There's tons of birds that you can see there. But like the woodlot is probably one, of, probably my favorite place to bird to bird in the biggest week. It's a lot of fun there. I'm not saying McGee because McGee Marsh has more birds, but this place is smaller and it's easy, it's easier to bird, I just think, because there's not as many people. Point PV in Canada, I'll get to in a later slide. Pearson Metro Park is by far the best place to start with young birders. It is not as overwhelming as McGee Marsh, which can be like, I don't know, you, it's like watching, it's like you're you're taking your son birding for the first time, and he's like, and you're trying to keep up with him. He's like, Dad, what's that? What's that blue one? Oh, look at this green one over here. Oh, look at this one. It's brown. It's not as, it's not very colored. Oh, look at the cerulean warbler. Or is it a cerulean? Maybe it's a black or blue. Where you're at this place, Pearson, it's not like you'll see the same birds, just not in this as big as numbers. It's more like there's four birds up here. It's a lot like what we just birded today. It's four there's four birds up here. You get a time to identify them before your son is, is or your daughter is running off chasing another bird. Because that's what happens with us sometimes. But so it's I would I would recommend if you go there, Pearson Metro Park definitely, because it also has a feeder area just like here. You can go, it's closed off, and you can see hummingbirds. We saw pine siskins, which is really interesting, that rare. Um, you can think hummingbirds, gross beaks, cardinals, blue jays, all the common birds. And then we also saw some wood thrushes and stuff coming down uh, just to go to the mealworms. And there were some, there's bluebirds there, so it's really nice. And you can see warblers from the side. It's always raining, so we land there. But it's really nice. Oak Openings Metro Park, which I don't know a lot about this place. I've only been there once to see a Kirtland's Warbler. That was like, we were like running there just to make sure it was still there and we saw it. But it is the best area. It is a huge place. It's probably 40 minutes away from, from uh, Mami. And you can see, I don't know, anything that you want to see there, I would say. You can see lark sparrows breeding. Um, there was a curtain tour that was there, which was really cool. But I'm just saying, I don't know a lot about that place, but there is orchard orioles, blue gross bees, um, all the prairie, like oak savannah birds that you can see there. So that place, that place is really cool. I'm hoping I can go there on field trips this year. So if you get a chance to go there, I'd recommend it. Black Swan Bird Observatory, I'll get to in a later slide. Pine Creek Wildlife Area, very similar to Metzger Marsh. Farther, a little farther away, except it has more of a woodlot. There's a lot more, it's like you walk out half a mile to the, you have to get to the water. And when we were walking, there was another group that was there, they saw Connecticut Warbler. Um, you can see, we saw Morning Warbler, Common Yellow Throat, Black Throat Blue Warbler, I mean, Canada Warblers, I just can't name all we saw a bunch, but so that area, if you get a chance to visit, it's a, it's like 
40 minutes away, so it's a little farther away than everything else. And then another area where uh, the festival is mainly located, this is where all the buses go out of and everything, is Mommy Bay State Park. It is really, it's my favorite place in the whole world to see Eastern Screech Owls. I see them, I feel like I see them every time I go. They nest, there's like two pairs that breed there. So that's pretty cool. But they have all, that's where all the booths are, that's where all the trips are, that's where most of the keynotes are. So that place, and that place, it's worth checking out for birding. You'll be there for, if you're doing any trips. But, so that, so this is my main list of the best burning areas that I've been to. And the ones that I didn't talk about, I'll get to in later slides. And this is me and my grandma and my brother uh, in front of the Beamer, the Beamer Boardwalk. So. so this is, these are some photos from the Beamer, this is where I'll talk about it. So this is like the green warbler right here, a killdeer. And this is my brother walking on Lake Erie. There's some common terms out there, but so, at McGee Marsh, it can be very, very good. Where you can see 70, 80 species in a day there, and you'll get 24, 25, I don't know how many were, but over 20 on a good day. You might get 30, you might even get 30 there in a couple of days, which is really cool. But I would say it's a great place, if you've never seen Prothonotary, or I pronounce it Prothonotary, Warbler, it's a great place to see those. They breed there, and there's golden wing warblers, um, blue wing warblers, and there's also on Twitter they have this thing where you can post. They have these little boardwalk numbers, and so people will post like there's a like Rob posted one. There's an outside flycatcher at number seven or something like that. So we go over the number, we find the number seven on the boardwalk, and there'll be a bunch of people gathered there. There'll be, there'll be flashes going, there'll be cameras. It sounds like little click, 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 click. That's what it sounds like if you're in the middle of the group. But, and there's the outside flycatcher. It's, it's really neat, because you can, we'll be like, we found there's a scissor-tailed flycatcher. We didn't get to see it though. But there's a scissor-tailed flycatcher on this random road in this random area. And the only reason we knew that was because of Twitter. Because they just, you post, there's like a group you can post it on, and so it has that. It's easier to know what's what's where and where's where's everything, but and so the boardwalk is like a quarter mile long. There's a west entrance where most people enter, enter, and there's an east entrance where most people like leave. But I usually will usually be on the boardwalk for like five hours, just going back and forth. And you can so morning workers, as you probably some of you might know, are really <coughs> hard to get looked at. They're always way down, staying under the undergrowth of the forest, and you're flipping over leaves, and you're like, oh, come on, my gosh, just come out and open, you bird. Come on, come on. And you're like, there, it's like a whole different thing. They're five feet away from you in the, like, you're on the boardwalk. They feel, you basically feel like the birds don't know you're there, but they actually really do. But it's basically like really, there's a, I've got some of my best morning warbler photos from there because they're five feet away in the understory of, of it and it's crazy looking and seeing these birds right there. Because I don't, in Chicago, where I go, morning warblers, you see in this little area, there's, they all get from there. We have no clue why. But you have to spend 45 minutes going around in circles, trying to hoping one will pop out so you can get a photo of it. Or here, you just walk by. There's a big group of birds. You kind of ask one, "What's over there?" And they'll say, "Morning warbler." Oh, so you try to move your way through the crowd, which can be like a traffic jam, and try to get a look at it. So, and sometimes I don't use flash a lot, but sometimes you'll catch another bird's flash on the bird because there's so many people there on the bird, so it looks like you're using flash. So that's pr it's pretty funny. So that's my main thing with McGee Marsh. It's, yeah, there's a lot more to say, but I don't have enough time to say, talk about it all. This is Point Pee Wee. So the reason I go here is it's in Canada, so it's a whole new thing. 
but also there's a lot of woodhorse and a lot of rarities. I feel like every time you go there, there's a black-headed gull at the point, there's a couple surf scoters, there's a rooster's warbler, which is right here, there's a, I don't know what else, prairie warbler. What would you expect to be on there? And so it's pretty cool to see all these birds in Canada, which is like a whole new thing. Like it's a whole new, a house sparrow, you know, here, a house sparrow. You don't really care about them. But there, it's like a house sparrow. Ooh, a new Canada bird. Uh, your big family. Ooh, number two. Rock pigeon, number three. And like, my list is around 100 right now for Canada. But, so here's some, the reason I go there, as I said, the word list, and rarities, but it's also just to be with a whole nother atmosphere of birders, 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 and where they, it's diff, it's a lot different birding there than birding at Leaking Marsh because there's, it's, there's more people, but they're more spread out, and you'll be walking on a trail, and they'll, you'll be passing people like, Mickey Marsh, most people are kind of standing there, you kind of look by or something like that. There are just people, they just walk and look for birds. It's, it's really cool. Like I've seen, I went on a walk, we were walking down to the point, and we saw at least 50 Baltimore Orioles at the time. They, they read like crazy, it's crazy seeing all these birds. I've seen like the most in one day, I've seen like three or four in one little area. But seeing 50 of them, just there'll be one flying this way, and then you walk 10 more feet, there's another one. Oh, there's two more in the tree. It's pretty cool. And like going birding there, it's different because you have to take a tram. If you want to go to the point, the southernmost tip of Canada, where you can see scoters, and if you're lucky. Um, it's, a, it's like a 10 minute ride to get down there. So it's not that bad, but you can actually take, they do these trips every, uh, like twice in May, where you can go over Fort Clinton, which is like 30, 30 minutes east of Mommy Bay. You can go over there, you can take a two hour boat ride over, and once you get there, they'll take you in buses to the visitor center where you can see where everything is. The tropical birding they do, which is a tour company, they have birds that they've seen there lately. So it's pretty nice. They leave guided walks. Like we, they took us. We asked if they had any screech owls because I wanted to see an owl in Canada. So I saw they took me to see a screech owl. There's, I'm just saying there are tons of screech owls over there. I don't know. I never see them in Illinois, but over there I, I see like 10, 11 of them per trip, which is a lot. And if I didn't tell you, this is a rooster's warbler, which is a hybrid between a golden wing and a blue wing warbler. It's a back cross of Matt, I believe it's like it was bred with also another Brewster's Warbler and the Golden Wing. So its mom was a Golden Wing and its dad was a Brewster's or its dad was a Golden Wing and something like that. And then this one over here is a blue wing, uh, black throated blue warbler, female, just staring at the camera. <coughs> This one is a very close black and white warbler female. As you notice, it doesn't have as much black right here. And it's like the males of black and white warblers, they're, they have a lot of black on them. They're very black. But this one, they have, they've got more tan, white, like that. So that bird was pretty cool. Under, like we're walking on a deck, it hopped under and then came out the other side. It came up a tree like two feet from us. There's photos on my mom's iPhone, it was so close. But, so that's um, Point Peely. The bird banding at Black Swan Bird Observatory. That is a really good thing to do, as Matthias said, he liked it. But it's a really good thing to do with young kids who are, or even kids that are my age or adults and stuff. They love, it's really cool to have a Baltimore Oriole in your hands or Wilson's Warbler or a Black Burning Warbler in your hands. You look at it and you, like this bird, traveled 5,000, 4,000 miles to get here and then eat and go over another stretch of water and then land at the tip of Point Peely where that's where all the birds are kind of going <gasps> and just sit there. 
So that's why all the birds are so close there. That's why it's really, but it's so cool, neat. Like the Oriole on the right, these are both Baltimore Orioles. He's a young male, he's an adult. I got to release him. That was pretty cool. I never released one before. So I've always, I've always loved, I've always wanted a bird band, but I, there's not very many people near us that do, that I know. So this is the, this is a Baltimore Oriole also. You can see how close I got to it. Um, Here's a Wilson's Wurbler. This was actually taken by my brother with an iPhone. But he got to release this bird. So that they they just put up the nets and you can't go and see the nets. You just stay out there and they'll give you an educational experience. It's totally if you want to even take a kid that doesn't even like birds there, it might work out okay. But he I know he'll like birds, because after this, seeing Nashville Warbler, you can see how small his feet are, and it, it gives you a feeling like, we can, we get so exhausted after going five miles of walking. These things go hundred times farther than us, and they do it in, let me go to hummingbirds, do it in 500 miles in one night, which is really, the bird this big goes that, that far in one night, which is pretty cool. And we get oh, oh, after five miles, five miles. But and then this photo right here, this is a Nashville warbler. You can see it's van, the van they put on right there. I don't know what the number is. But if you look very closely, right there, you can see red on the for their crown. Nashville warblers, they do a display, or when they're threatened, they pull up their crown. It's like ruby red. So it's. Uh, very similar to what ruby crown kinglets do, but these they do it, and it's really cool because you don't often get to get that close to Nashville warblers where you can actually see their crown without them displaying it. So this one was really was really neat to see that because I've never seen that before. So and here's some other photos. At, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention at Black Swan Bird Observatory they also do woodcock walks which are really nice. If you've never seen American Woodcock and want to see them display at night, you can go out there, it's a five minute walk, and you just sit there and you'll hear them. When they, they're coming down, you'll see them. You have to look, they go so high up and it's getting dark, so it's hard to see them. And they spiral down like this, and then they start going boom, boom, and they go like in lines back and forth, and it's really cool to see those I've never seen it before, and I got to see it for the first time this year. I've seen them, like at McGee, they're walking around sometimes foraging, but I've never seen them do their display. Um, this right here, as I said, here's an Eastern Screech Owl at Mommy Bay. This is my first red morph I've ever seen. I have, and then these are trumpeter swans. I There are a lot of trumpeter swans there, so. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see those. And then here's a myrtle yellow rumped warbler. That was at Point Peewee in Canada. I feel like not the only thing you see there are birds. People too. But there are tons of snakes and frogs. I didn't see any salamanders or anything like that. But here's my brother. He's holding a fox snake we found in these rocks. Um, here's a picture of a fox snake I found at McGee Marsh. It, it, it freaked a couple of people out because it's like five feet away from the boardwalk. It was only a foot and a half long though. And here's a northern leopard frog that was at the E Marsh. And it, there, there's, you'll see tons of frogs, snakes, turtles, landing turtles, which are endangered there. I saw those for the first time, which is pretty cool. So that basically wraps up my presentation. If you want to know anything about the biggest week or anything, just Google biggest week in American birding and it, should, it, it didn't come up, I don't know why, but it should come up. So if you have any questions, you can ask me right now or afterwards, but thank you for listening to my experience at the biggest week in American birding. Thank you.